Hey guys, I think I found the perfect 35 millimeter point and shoot film camera, but there's one tiny flaw to it. So I think the R1S is the perfect and maybe one of the best point and shoot film cameras that I've used. And granted, I'm no expert and I don't have too much experience with point and shoots, but a decent amount, I think this one is the best one so far. So the biggest issue with these cameras is that the LCD screen, it's almost very hard to find one that has a working LCD screen. And the LCD screen will basically tell you the number of frames you have left, what shooting mode you're on, and stuff like that. And in my opinion, it's not that big of a deal. And the reason why I say that is because this is on a very... I wouldn't say cheap, but relatively cheap. Definitely on the cheaper end of point and shoot film cameras. I think the keyword is a point and shoot camera or key phrase, whatever you want to say. So I think the LCD doesn't really matter too much because I want to say like 90% of people using this camera is probably going to be using it on auto mode anyways. And as far as the film counter goes, that's not that big of a deal. I think if you were uh, using a camera like an SLR that's your it's more purpose driven versus a point and shoot camera where you're kind of just carrying it. You're just trying to get mostly candid photos. You know, you're trying to not really miss a shot. So as far as what mode you're on, again, most people are going to be using it in auto. Another huge perk of this camera is the size and the weight of it. It's definitely smaller than my iPhone pro the max size the biggest one and it's very super lightweight almost uh too lightweight so i guess you can kind of knock the quality of this thing it is very plasticky and kind of cheaply made but again this is definitely on the lower side of point and shoot cameras So to help with the broken LCD screens on my personal one, I put a little note on it to know which mode I'm on. So it's basically every time you press the button on the mode, uh, it goes through a cycle and same with the flash. So according to this chart that I made, you'll definitely know which mode you're on. So when you press the mode the first time, it's in super night mode. You press it again, it's in infinity mode, so it'll be basically trying to focus as far as possible. And then in the third one, when you press it the third time, you'll be in single autofocus mode. And then you press it the fourth time and it's back to full auto. Now when you're pressing the flash button on this camera, when you press it the first time, it is red eye reduction. The second time you're turning the flash off. The third time, you're turning the flash on all the time. And then the fourth one, you'll be in slow synchro mode, which is basically if you want a subject um, in the foreground and the background to be lit up, this is the mode that you want to be in. And then for lastly, if you press it the fifth time, it goes back to flash auto.
So this camera does come with a 30 millimeter lens and f 3.5. And in my opinion, that's a perfect size lens for this type of camera where it's not too wide, but it's also not too tight. So you can kind of get a perfect view of everything while you're on the go. Now, if you do want to go a little wider than that, it does have a 24 millimeter wide panoramic mode that you can switch to and it also has a regular panoramic mode while you're using the 30 millimeter lens and it kind of just crops the image but again in my opinion this is kind of pointless if you just edit your photos in post anyway but if you don't do that and just want the image as a panoramic view it does that for you in the camera So another interesting thing that I found this camera to do is when you put in the roll of film, it pre-winds the film for you. So it's basically pulling as soon as you close the door to, and once you put in the roll of film, it's basically pulling out all the film and every shot you take, it's going back into the film canister. So I, you could say the perk of this is if you accidentally open the back of your camera, every photo that you've already taken, it's basically saved in there versus a usual like an SLR. You, if you open the back, um, all your shots that you've taken, they're kind of screwed. So yeah, this is uh, something that I don't think is unique to this at all, but uh, it's the first camera that I've used that has this feature. So I thought it was pretty cool and worth mentioning. Now I know most of us are here to see image quality and what my thoughts are on the image quality of this camera. And honestly, I will say that for the amount that this camera is going for, you know, around $150 on average, personally, I wouldn't spend more than that on this. Again, with the broken LCD screen, which to me is not a big deal at all. I would say the image is fair again. This is a point and shoot camera. I'm not, I'm mostly carrying this out if I'm going to hang out with friends, if I'm just going out and kind of doing something active and I just want to collect memories. This is what I'm bringing. So I can sacrifice, you know, like a great image from an or a better image from an SLR by having something like this where I don't have to worry about focusing anything. It'll do all the metering for me if I need flash. Hey, it'll pop the flash for me. So in terms of not having to worry about that and the image quality that it is giving me, I think it is excellent. Now, of course, there's cameras out there or point and shoot cameras like the Contax T2 and stuff like that, where the image quality is also impeccable while having all these features that I mentioned. But again, it's, it's what you pay for, right? I'm just um, reviewing a camera that's about 100 to $200. So that's why I say for that amount of money, I think this is kind of the best camera that you can get. I actually like the image that it comes because it's not too sharp. It still has that film look to it that a lot of people, especially nowadays, want and i know what i'm signing up for when i'm getting a camera like this it's more so let the image speak for itself uh it's more of a document documentation style it's just again to save the memories that i'm having on an everyday basis so something as lightweight and as that something as easy to use uh, i think the rico r1s is very hard to beat so that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this camera, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment and I definitely read them all. So again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. I would greatly appreciate that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.